So the, cent the central question when working with decision trees is to construct them or learning them. This is basically the harder part. Once we have the tree, classification is very easy. The hard part is creating the tree. So let's now lo look at how would we want to go about creating a tree. Imagine we are given a training data set of 100 examples, right, just as an example, and we want to figure out um, how to build a tree. The way we are building the tree is in this, in this kind of recursive fashion from top to bottom. So the idea is that first we decide on a decision node, we then decide on a condition on which attribute and which value are we going to create a split, and then the data that, that satisfies the condition goes to the left, and the data that doesn't satisfy the condition goes to the right. And imagine that now we, have we started with 100 uh, examples that we kind of throw from the top of the tree, uh, 10 of them go to the left and 90 of them go to the right. So now I can think that I have, um, an, again, the very similar problem, right? I have a training data set now on the left-hand side of 10 examples, and I need to decide what to do. One option would be to say, look, okay, I will put a decision node here. I will decide which is the next feature, next feature to split on, what is the value, and that would create the left subtree and the right subtree. Or I could decide that I only see 10 training examples, that is very little, let me actually go and create a prediction node here. So let me stop building the tree on this side, but let me create a prediction node. And here is my, you know, prediction node, predicting the kind of the best prediction possible, 0.42, right? On the other hand, um, now I need to take the right hand side of the tree and decide what, you, what I want to do, do on this side. For example, I could either say, okay, let's just create another uh, prediction node here and be done with creating the tree, or I can say, let me create another split node, right? So I create, let's say, another split node using some way to decide how to do this. I need then to find another um, variable on which I want to split and another um, value. So this creates another condition, which then further goes and takes this data set of 90 examples and splits them to the left-hand side and to the right-hand side, or to the left branch and to the right branch. So now imagine that, you know, this split uh, evenly uh, puts 45 of the training examples to the right and 45 um, to the other side. And now I, we can continue recursively being, building this process, right? Given this set of 45 training examples, we need to decide what to do with them. Do we create a split or not? Um, imagine we create another split, so which means we would now create um, another condition, uh, pick another feature. We could actually go pick the same feature again as we had above, and this way keep doing the tree. And what you see is that by, with every split, we kind of also split our data set to the smaller and smaller chunks, right? And the, the idea is that the whole process keeps repeating until, until we want to decide that it's been enough and we want to stop and create a prediction node. So if we think about this, basically the basic operation is that we imagine that we are currently um, residing in some node of the tree, let's call this node G, and um, let D sub G be the data that reaches um, this node G, right? As we take our training data set on the top, we kind of let it drop throughout the tree and we are asking what is the subset of data that reaches our node G. Then the central decision we have to make is, do we continue building the tree at this node G or not, right? And if we say, yes, we continue, then the next question is, which variable or which feature and which value do we create a split upon, right? So what will be splitting here? What is the condition on which we make the split and kind of send some, some data to the left and some data to the right? And if the answer to our question whether do we continue building the tree is no, if that's the answer, then the question is how do we make a prediction, right? We need to create this hexagonal as we draw it a predictor node and we need to decide how are we predicting the y in this case, right? So if the answer is yes, let's keep building the tree, we need to figure out how are we creating the split node. If the answer is no, we have to figure out how to build a prediction node. Um, so the way the decision tree is built basically is this very in simple co um, recursive construction where we have a function, we can think of it as a build subtree, and all this function does is the following. It says, uh, for a given data set that, that arrives into this particular subtree, let us figure out what is the best feature and the best value to split upon, right? So this is the definition of the split. And then what is the data that goes to the left branch of the split? What is the data that goes to the right branch of the split? Now we say, okay, if for the left-hand side some stopping criterion is met, then um, 
let's create a prediction node. Um, and otherwise, let's go and continue building the tree using the, using the data that goes to the left hand side. And we do the same thing with the right hand side, right? We say, are we satisfied with all the data that came into this subtree? If, this, if there is some stopping criteria that says yes, then we say, okay, let's build a prediction out. Otherwise, let's continue building the tree, right? So at every step, all we have to do is find the split and then check whether this stopping criterion is met. And if it's met, we build a prediction node, so our hexagonal node. Otherwise, we keep building the tree by recursively calling the build subtree function. So this is the basic idea how to do this. So what I will do next is I will slowly go through these um, uh, important functions one, two, and three and address um, how do we implement them and how do we think about them. And in particular, we will start with the first function, which is find best split. So the question is, how do we find a good split in the data? Which means, how do we identify the feature and the value on which to split? So the question is, how do we split? And the idea is, when I say how do we split, is how do we pick the attribute and the value that, that, that gives us a good split? So what we have to do is we have to measure how, or create a criterion or a measure that tells us how, how successful is splitting on a, on a given value. And now when I say how successful it, something is, I, need, I come to this notion of information gain, right? If we think about intuitively, our idea is that whenever I create a split, I want to do it, if we think about classification, let's go kind of back at predicting whether somebody is wealthy or not, right? I want to create a, very, a split in such a way that all the wealthy people go to the left and all the not wealthy people go to the right. So the, basically the idea is that I would try to find this magic condition that sends everyone to the left and sends uh, kind of everyone that's not wealthy to the right. The, the, of course, on, in real data we won't be able to do this, but we would like to know for every feature how close to this ideal um, condition does it, does, it, does it bring us. And here is where the notion of information gain is, is arriving. So what information gain tells us is tells us how much a given attributes, a attribute tells us about the class Y, right? So what is kind of the, con the, the information about uh, class Y that is stored in a given attribute or feature X. To understand the concept of information gain, here is how we will think about it. So we say that inform we want to have a quantity that we call information gain of Y given X. And the way we think about this, we think that there is, a, let's say that there are two people that, 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 that can communicate over a phone or over a binary line. And what, what the person of the left would, on the left would like to do, it would like to tell the person on the right um, um, who is rich. So now, for example, if a person on the right knows nothing about um, the properties of the people, then we have to, for every person, we have to tell this, this person on the right um, who is rich and who is not. Now what the information gain uh, tells us is to say how many bits on the average would the, would, of communication would we save if, if actually both ends of the line would know uh, the attribute x. So imagine that um, both ends of the line know that right now we are only talking about uh, old people that have, that have spent lots of time in tech industry. For example, this way, then uh, communicating who is rich or not would require much less information because we would already have a high prior that uh, old people in industry are rich, for example. Right? So the idea is, in some sense, how much more in, communica in communication would we save if we, if we both know the value of this attribute x. So let me now slowly derive how, how we do information gain, and this, with, uh, this will also make it clear what do we mean by it. So, Given that we now know how to create a split on categorical attributes, right? So for categorical attributes, we want to do the information gain. Now, the question is, how do we find the best split in other cases? For example, for continuous variables. If variable is continuous, then the way we find the best split is to compute what is called the impurity, right? So the idea will be that, that we want to create, we have a data set D that comes inside the node, and then it gets split to the data set on the left and the data set to the right, right? So the idea is that um, data, data set on the left, union data set on the right equals the, the whole data set, right? So something comes inside the node, D comes in, and then D sub L goes to the left and D sub R goes to the right. Then what I can do is I can compute the variance of all the, all the examples in D, multiplied by the size of D, and then from that I subtract the sum of 
the variance um, of the left data set plus the variance of the right data set, of course, both scaled by the sizes. And the idea is if this um, difference is high, what this means is that initially the data set D had very high variance. Afterwards, um, the, the, the resulting variance after we split was very small, right? And when I say the variance of D, I simply mean what is the variance of the target variable, right? So it's the average value of Y minus the ith value of Y squared summed up and taken the average. So this is what I mean by variance. And the goal is that the idea is that at the beginning I have uh, lots of variance after the split, each individual um, data sets, so the left and one data sets have uh, small, va small variances. And the idea is I want to pick the, the feature on which to split and the value such that this impurity or difference, this difference in variances is as large as possible. So now that we know how to uh, this create a split, the next question is when do we decide to stop, right? So if we decide to create a split and we have categorical variables, we want to use information gain. If we have um, real valued or integer uh, variables, we want to use this uh, decrease in, uh, in impurity or maximize that difference in variances. Now the question is when do we decide to stop? So here we are basically having many possible different heuristic options to do this. For example, one option is to say I will stop and create an, um, a prediction node when the leaf is pure. For example, we can ask uh -huh, the variance of the y, y values in that leaf is small, so we want to create a prediction node. We could, uh, another uh, possible solution would be to say I will stop building the, building the tree in that when the number of examples that comes into a given node is small, so for example, less than 10. Or in practice, we would want to use both of these rules and stop building as soon as one of them is satisfied, right? If we get very few training examples arrive to a given um, node, this means we have very little data there, so it's better stop uh, building the tree. If we have the data that comes to a given node to be very pure, so if everything is of the same class, then again, we should stop building the tree and just uh, make a prediction. So this is about the second question. And the last question is how do we make a prediction? I will already discuss this a bit, right? Once we decide that we want to make a prediction out. For example, for regression, it's very easy. We can just predict the majority, um, the majority value. Or for example, we can predict the average Y of all the data that is in the leaf. Um, what we could also do is we could take all the data that is in the leaf and then build a very small linear regression model, right? So the idea would be that um, I take all the data that arrives into the, into the tree and then I build a regression model that fits uh, all the data that falls into that um, individual tree leaf. Um, for classification, what is most often done is to say, let's predict the most common value of Y, right? Basically, let's predict the majority value uh, that is in the class uh, or in the leaf of the tree.